Hey guys, we have a lot brewing for you. We have these powerhouse women here that they were actually market makers and floor pit traders. So the stories that we were talking about before we came on, I mean, it was like hours of just laughing. So we'll keep it clean. We'll keep it clean because the stories are, are insane. But we're going to take you from where we were, what trading looked like back in the day, all the way to artificial intelligence and quantum computation. And, um, you know, we've had Kirk to touch on bots. Sandra Stone's going to show us a couple of automation tools. Um, so it's going to be a fun packed experience. So stay tuned. Five o'clock somewhere. Grab your glass of wine. We're going to start to take it down. And uh, I'm really excited to introduce you to these amazing people. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right. So we're going to get to you, Sandy West, but make sure you share your slides so the boys can can set you up when you're ready. Um, we have three amazing people. We're going to start off with you, Leisha Leslie. You are SIBO market maker, you know, former SIBO market maker. Wow. In, in pretty tough. But, and same with you, Sandy West. You are also on the floor. And Sandy's on the top right there. Sandra Stone is on the bottom right. She uh, flew in Cessnas following the cartel. So really incredible woman. <laughs> yeah, it's the story. <laughs> we're having the best time before this. This is kind of like an afterthought. So we, were, we had a great time. But um, so Leisha, commodities future trader and executive chart analyst at Option Pit. Sandy West, you are a BNP in the S&P 500. You saw the E-mini contracts start to sunset the um out open outcry which is you know hand signals and shouting on the floor and now you've created a systematic trading platform in the forex markets which is huge and then sandra stone uh gunslinger <laughs> trading made simple um she's really about education and simplifying this complicated intricate stuff so that we can all you know lowers the barrier of entry and we can all take a bite out of it so um we're gonna start off with some slides to take you back. I do have a phone call, excuse me. So yeah, Gordon, <laughs> Gordon yeah, I will stories. We're gonna talk about the floor, just hold just hold on. Gordon Greco, oh my God. Okay, continue. That's hilarious. Sandy, so yes. what kind of slides do you have? Can you take us through a visual tour of where we came from? Oh yeah, I definitely can. Let me uh, share my screen with you and I will uh, show you kind of where it all began, at least for me. Um, and uh, can you see that screen okay? Perfect. Okay, so really we're just, uh, I think today we're talking about how technology has kind of, you know, uh, changed the, the trading landscape and, um, uh, you know, we had open outcry, which was around for a long, long time since, you know, the exchanges had started. Uh, this is a picture of the S&P Futures 500 pit uh, in the mid 90s, uh, where you know, the people were making markets within the pit, trading their own money. And um, and so this was where I started my career. Uh, then what came down onto the trading floor was the Immuni S&P contract in 1997. This uh, brave soul entered into the pit with these very aggressive men. And he was a brave soul because coming into that pit with that computer, uh, knowing that that computer was probably going to uh, eliminate their jobs and their opportunity and their income and everything else, or at least make it more challenging, uh, you know, this is where basically the edge transferred from. So. When I talk about the edge, you have, you know, all, all traders are trying to get the edge and the edge was in the pit. That was as close to the action as you could get. And then it basically transferred uh, to the tablet, to the computer when the E-mini S&P contract came down uh, onto the floor. Um, then after that, it kind of started advancing a little further and it uh, transferred into high frequency trading and uh, algorithmic traders. So programmers were developing code and uh, 
I think now uh, algorithms account for uh, things like 90% of the daily volume in the S&P 500 e-mini contract. So it's been a big deal and it all pretty much kind of, I think, started when the internet came about in the mid 90s. So when that internet came in, uh, that's when we really started seeing technology change, and uh, at least in the trading world. So, um, I uh, have um, uh, a person that I work with that is a quantitative analyst, and he's been doing this for 30 years. And we uh, have developed systematic trading strategies uh, in the futures, foreign exchange, and options market. This is uh, an example here of uh, vertical spreads being done in the uh, SPY, which is an ETF. And so this tells you, it kind of makes it, we, we work with beginner traders to uh, teach them options and what is a call, what is a put, and, and then putting on uh, these positions either by being sent an alert or automating it where you can open up your account at Tradier and fund it and hook the automation through a, third-party website that'll automatically execute the trades for you. And we're going to do so. a quick shout out to Joe. Joe, if you're listening, we're this is amazing stuff. So thank you. And, you know, just to give a real experience of what you two did, Max, why don't you throw up this video so people can actually experience this? Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. is not sure quite exactly right there, but you that's where you came from. And so, Leisha, so what was it like? And what was, you know, we have tech now, so we have fintech and we have apps in our pockets. How did you chart back in the day? And tell us about the relationship between, you know, um, the, the underlying stock and calls and put and, and tell us that great story you were, you were mentioning earlier. Sure, sure. Let me show you my pit. Now, my pit wasn't as large as Sandy's. <laughs> I was over at the SIBO, and um, this gentleman right there is Lex's brother. Hey, hey. So, uh, yeah, my bit was probably about 20 guys, and this was only about half of them, but um, not not any less intense, though. We had our crazy days. Um, not every day. We definitely had boring days, but um, before this, uh, you know, as you can see, no one has a computer in their hand. We did not have handhelds in our hands. Before this, though, I clerked for a market maker, and it was about 1986-87, and not everyone knew the relationship between the stock, the calls, and the puts, because when options began trading over at the Board of Trade in, like, this little room they started it in 1973, they only listed calls. So people would buy calls, stock goes up, and that's how they made money. Well, then they introduced puts, the people that really knew how options worked. And not all these people on badges, all these traders knew the relationship called the option synthetics of how calls and puts create stock, stock and puts create calls, and calls and stock create puts. They're all intertwined. And if you combine the three, you can be a risk, you can have a risk-free trade on. And you can also price your options. So we would, we would run our theoreticals upstairs on the computer, put them on cards so you can read the stocks here, the calls are here, the puts are there. Or you knew the difference between the interest and the dividend and what, the, what it should be. You could price your options without a computer if you knew just two things, the stock price, the dividend, the interest, right? And the strike price. Well, not everyone knew this relationship. The gentleman, the, the guy that I worked for, I wouldn't know if I'd call him a gentleman. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a whole nother story too. When he, when he lost money, there, there were some tantrums being uh, thrown around. Anyway, um, he knew the relationship and taught myself and another clerk, but other people did not. He would literally scoop dollars risk-free 
knowing the option synthetics. Like he knew if he bought a call here where he could sell the put there and sell the stock that he would, he would lock in dollars, literally dollars. And now, you know, when I left, we went to pennies and everything else. Our margins just did this. Right. So yeah, it was a crazy time, completely different time. Um, then I went into trading futures and into technical analysis, charting. I combined charts with pitchforks are my favorite charting. Here's an example of the, uh, my pitchfork in the e-mini futures since October 20 of 23 and how well it's followed along. I'm bullish. I think we can uh, trade up to the top of the pitchfork here before we decide to roll over. But um, also remember when uh, these pitchforks were developed in the 20s, uh, three gentlemen uh, put them together them in collaboration and uh, the one guy called the 29 crash, Babson. Uh, they were mathematicians, it's physics, it's math, you know, all those things. And they were hand charted also. Now wow. at least we can draw the pitchforks with the computer. Um, I can't enter your order for you though, but I can tell you right. a good trade idea. Right, and so- it's Originally that's... started hand charting, but not any longer. Okay, so this is this is incredible. So Sandra, take us to the next step. So now we're all the way into automation, and you speak about you know um, order flow and gamma data and how to gain that visibility that we otherwise back then would not have had. So what are some of the tools that you use, and why is it that why is that important? So um, hello everyone. So you know I found it interesting as I was uh, trading. I, I uh, you know I'm here in Southern California. We have to wake up really early, and I have to tell you that I learned automation for the sheer purpose of sleeping in. <laughs> and I know it sounds crazy, but it totally changed my life. And as right. I tell others how to automate their trades, it changes your life. You don't have yeah. to be you know glued to your screen manually. Um, you know, as uh, others have pointed out, you recognize certain levels that are triggered and you identify those levels. You can automate that. And, um, you know, the first time that I was practicing this, uh, you know, I was still kind of practicing and kind of journaling and saying, I don't know if it's going to really work. So the first time I, I did a trade uh, during automation, I, you know, did my homework the night before. I'll never forget. It was on Lululemon and uh, woke up to an $800 profit. And I was just floored. And I thought, that's it. Like that completely has changed the way that I trade. I trade probably a good 90% of my trades are all automated. Even if I'm manually trading, I'll place the trade and immediately either have a stop loss or a conditional order that identifies my stop as well as my take profit. And I always say, if you don't program your take profit, trust me, your stop loss will get hit. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's um, so true. After I started, yeah, right. After I started learning that, um, I started to share it with others, you know, just kind of on social media, media, and then uh, started training people on um, in you know free videos on YouTube and stuff. And I think it really has cultivated this, um, you know, a new awareness for automation. Now we've, you know, got into the error on the market maker side of automation, but for retail traders, you know, there's only about 3% of retail traders and it's, it, we're really late to coming on board with automation. And so um, just like Sandy was indicating, you know, she was helping create some indicators. You know, I think that's your first step. You're creating indicators to allow people that are beginners to start to identify how you can get into a trade and out of a trade. But to completely automate it is wonderful because you can see the level, you can enter it and exit it without even being there. And so we, you know, as an example, I mean, that's my whole uh, platform and community is about teaching automation. We're developing tools, of course, to automate with uh, automating bots uh, so that trades can, you know, not, not only can you get into a trade and out of a trade one time, but the machine will do it over and over and over again, like three, four times in a day as that setup keeps happening. And so right. as an individual trader, I can automate one trade as an example or another trade, but I can't tell my system each and every time on Thinkorswim as an example, that's the platform I use, you know, each and every time this happens to automate it. 
And um, so I think this is where we're going. I think in 10 years, we're not even going to be looking at charts. You know, we come from uh, 12, uh, 15 years ago when retail traders, we were just trend traders looking at charts. And then, you know, we found option flow. And when option flow came, it was like, you know, the heavens just opened up. It was like, ah, we could see where all the institutional money was going. And this was just such um, a game changer for us to be able not to just look at a chart and look at candlesticks and try to analyze those patterns, but just to see the real money orders going into certain stocks that you could follow. And now, I, I mean, that was probably 15, 20 years ago, I should say. And now we have 10 years ago where we have Gamma Injects. Now, Gamma Injects is the market makers who are actually taking in the entire marketplace of orders in order to facilitate those trades. And their profit is basically that bid and ask price. They're not in the, this division is not in the market to to, you know, bet bet for the market or NVIDIA going up or down. It's literally just to facilitate this mechanism to create trades for everyone to be the market maker and, and let the system run. So while it's doing this, though, we now can identify their hedges that they create in order to facilitate those trades because they're not making money except for the bid and the ask. So now we can actually see the market makers support and resistance levels. This really is gone from charting, you know, with a hand chart with the, you know, the graph paper all the way to identifying where the market makers are actually identifying their uh, support and resistance levels. I really do feel in the next five, 10 years, we won't even be looking at charts. That's a good point. And you know, that's a perfect GameStop is in the news again. And, you know, there was a feedback loop. So when market makers had to, to buy more shares to, to hedge your Delta exposure, you know, there's that, that acceleration that happens. And um, so, you know, Leisha, what do you think about, and from a market making perspective, what Sandra said? Um, I think it sounds awesome and very cool that she has a machine that automatically, Yeah. I mean, we're all automated. We can enter a trade and put our stop loss orders in and, and our, our profit order in. I mean, we can all do that, but uh, for your machine to regenerate uh, another, a new order without you inputting it, it's pretty cool. Um, I have to, I have to, I think market makers do more than just the bid ask. I think they probably carry positions. I know we did. And I don't, I think I'm assuming they do, um, that they make a lot of money. So, but they, they do make a lot of money with that bid ask, even though it's been narrowed so much. Yeah. Um, it's incredible some of the tools. So we have high frequency trading along with, you know, and we have these bots and it feels like this zero DTEs are coming online. And so with that, we also have these two behemoths coming towards us. So we have artificial intelligence and we have quantum computation coming forward. And so with fundamentals, you see artificial intelligence can really start to grab satellite data. Jim Bianco was just talking about the Red Sea closing and supply chain you know, happening supply supply chain issues happening around around the world, and you know, you you couldn't quite grab that before we had the internet, and so artificial intelligence is coming in giant leverage for yeah. retail traders. And you know, there is this concept of first, second, and third contact. So first one be curation. It's a race. You know, we see this with social with race for your attention, and then the next one is you know, to create real value so that they're, and to connect, there's like an intimacy, but the third contact is no contact at all. So what happens when singularity happens? And, you know, there's something huge. BlackRock has something called Aladdin and they oversee 21.6 trillion in assets. And just to give you an idea, it's a little bit lower than the U S GDP. So, but the question is, have you ever heard of Aladdin? And so these, 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 so it's asset liability and debt and derivative investment networks. And uh, Aladdin provides tools for risk analysis, trading and compliance. But, um, you know, so there's how are you guys using artificial intelligence in some of your fundamentals or do you just remain technical? I, I still rely on my pitchforks and remain technical Okay, at the, at the moment. Right. Although now I met Sandra Stone, I, I would definitely be interested in, right. in what she's doing for sure. Right, right. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, so as far as the tools you use, so 
Sandy West, now you are not the lead drummer of the Runaways, just to be clear, correct? <laughs> That's Sandy. Are you, can you hear me, Sandy? <laughs> or maybe she's, she's having a bad connection, but she might be. She might be. But She's a drummer? You know, she what? No. So Sandy West was a drummer for the Runaways. So, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Right. So, Very cool. So as far as automation goes, Sandra, someone can be overwhelmed and they have they don't know how to code and they get confused so what is what's a baby step for someone just jumping in where do they go how do they get to automation how do they jump in because once you just do a little bit you get the bug and and you know the great thing about automation is it removes this fomo and it keeps that discipline so give us give us a first step for someone who's never gotten into it well, I'm really glad that you asked because uh, I'm just uh, putting together a program that is strictly automation, even for a beginner trader. So even though you don't know technical patterns and, and uh, you know, price action and all the pieces to the puzzle, you can actually uh, start to learn a little bit about automation on the platform of Schwab, Thinkorswim, and be able to follow along with me, basically. And, you know, within a, a couple hours, learn how to automate your trades. Um, you know, I provide an indicator that gives you the trigger levels, you know, to either go long or go short. Uh, and really, this is just support and resistance. This isn't secret sauce. This is, you know, the computers have support and resistance on a 100 indicators. It's not hard to find. But really, you know, I think a new person just gets so overwhelmed with all the information. I know that when I started uh, to learn about trading that I was really surprised, like, wow, every trader goes through this. I mean, it was just so much information. And automation was the last piece that I learned, and I learned it myself, so it took a really long time. So right. I really do believe that you can come in as a trader, a beginning tra a beginner trader, and utilize automation with these uh, trigger levels and be able to automate on a Sunday night your weekly watch list, as an example, and be set for the whole week and not have to manually trade. If the triggers trigger and you got some momentum behind you, you're going to hit your targets. If it doesn't, it's going to fall flat. You you have your stop loss in place. You got a defined risk trade, uh, you know, low risk, and then also you don't have any fear, any greed because it's automatically done for you. And right. um, so I think that you know is the first step is just basically learning your platform. I think if you're fearful of your platform and you're making a lot of mistakes on your platform, which we all do, by the way, so it's OK. Um, <laughs> I think once you can master your platform with someone giving you some step by step uh, uh, directions and instructions, that's easy to follow. I think once you learn how you can automate your trades and you can simulate it where you're not even utilizing your own capital. So you could get on as, as an example, I use and I teach Thinkorswim. So if you get onto this platform and you can simulate and you could document 30 trades on this program and witness to see if this is actually for you. You know, when I did it, uh, I simulated and I still couldn't believe it. And I didn't believe it until I took that first trade. And I even use automation as well for scalping. So it's amazing that you can utilize a template, you know, getting in and, and getting out with uh, however, uh, either a percentage or a dollar amount that you're looking for. And you can automate your scalping as well with templates. So there's a really a lot of value through automation, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. Right. You know, it's, it's wild. You have to that, you know, Sandy West was telling us a story about how she had figured out, you know, of where she didn't need to calculate. And I don't know if you can tell us that story quickly, if you remember that, but she could, she had an edge on people because she, she kind of figured something out um, ahead of time. And I don't know if you kept that to yourself, but the interesting thing is with all of these engines coming towards us, it's almost like, you know, you can't not pick these new tools. You're almost being forced to make sure that you're, you're aware and educated. So high frequency trading, there's a great book called Flash Boys, and it talks about um, latency arbitrage. And it sounds complicated, but there's great documentaries and, you know, um, some other ones, you know, like uh, Gaming Wall Street on HBO, you can really have, have, a, there's, incredible resources. But, you know, the, the neat thing about these two who have been on the floor 
is you really have to take this stress that's in your face. So a lot of times when you were in trading or, you know, you, how do you manage that stress and stay focused to your discipline and your rules of, you know, that you set in place for yourself and I'd just be interested to see what you guys think in this day and age to carry those tools that you've learned into this modern day that, um, you know, we do have automation, but how do you handle the pressure? First of all, I like to say that even if I had all my automated orders in and had everything all set, I, I still would have to go look at this. I would still have to go look at the chart. Right. I would still have to have some kind of control. I can't imagine myself just walking away from it. I, I don't right. know. I, I would have to, it would be something I'd have to get used to. But because right. I just it's I love the markets. I love watching it all day. I love, you know like you're in there to me if you're all automated then it's not fun when it doesn't sound as fun <laughs> i know take it all the way to the future what if every single thing is automated I, i'm uh i'm not as disappointed i'm i'm kind of <laughs> <laughs> did you do you agree with me sandy is that what you're saying you so her that? connection's a little buggy but yeah you know i, I think another thing just to to wind up oh this um i i mean uh i i'm having a hard time i'm having i have like a bad connection so don't worry about it but yeah so uh we yeah i'm sorry greatest... I, I have a bad connection so it's, it's going in and out but i was answer your question in, in regards to like uh discipline and <laughs> so we have the automation right and we and we manage the automation we watch it trade while it's trading and uh you know, for me, I can trade along with automation. And unfortunately, I just I'm so bad. I break all the rules. <laughs> I, right. I and mean, I try to be disciplined. I, I sometimes I'm watching the automation or I'm watching my own trade. I hold I, I catch myself holding my breath. Um, you know, I start my day off at 430 in the morning and uh, I go to the gym and then I you know, sit down in front of my computer at, at like a little right around when the market opens at 630 for me because I'm uh, on the West Coast. And, um, you know, as much as I love to push that button, I really do. Uh, you know, it's just better to let the automation do it because like I'll break all the rules. And and then if I get pissed off, I'll blow the, uh, <laughs> I just want to blow the account up because I get, you know, I get very emotional. So it's really better not to give me the button. And uh, so I just more manage the uh, the automation and just be like, just do as I say, not as I do. Great. <laughs> so Luis from Sigma Option, he he was on earlier and he brought up a good point, which is, you know, to to stick with your discipline is to stay healthy because the old yeah. technology is this thing and this thing, you know, is hundreds of thousands of years old. So how do we upgrade this thing? And um, and then if you look at the fusion of chromosome number two, that gets really it, interesting. There's a uh, cognitive synaptic plasticity and it's incredible. And so we know you golf, Sandy Wes, and we, you know, staying healthy. I'm a, I'm a health nut, um, but neurotropics to so take a good look at that. So we have NAD, L-theanine, lion's mane, omega-3 but to not reinvent the wheel. So just like if you're getting into trading to find someone great and model what they do, just model what they do, mimic their trades until you start to get your feet under your and, and absolutely virtually trade and learn there. Lex gives the advice is to don't stay virtual too long because you learn better when there's skin in the game. Um, but I health wise, I like Ben Greenfield. Um, Anthony William is brain saver. Great book. What do you guys do physically to to keep to keep your brain tip top? I also work out in the morning. I did. I just did a few weeks of that. Uh, well, they don't call it Bikram anymore because of the gentleman that. Well, he wasn't a gentleman. Again, no, again, I'm using gentleman where it's not apply. It doesn't apply. <laughs> anyway, the guy that the. Uh, created the hot yoga i did a few weeks of that uh i, I prefer the weightlifting though i'm more of a yeah. weightlifter in the, in the morning at the gym my husband all those supplements you just listed my husband's got you beat by like oh good oh my goodness. he knows every supplement under the sun here take this i'm like okay <laughs> brilliant what about you sandra 
You know, I really think, uh, you know, um, you can, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Is that for Sandy? No, for, for Sandra and then Sandy, go ahead. Okay. So I was, um, you know, I'm a, I love to uh, play golf and, uh, oh, you know, love to uh, work out and stuff. Um, I think when you're running a business, you know, you get uh, kind of preoccupied with everything that you have to do. However, um, I think for my, you know, the brain exercises that I like to do is, is I think it's really hard for people to identify, especially traders, that even though you have the ability to trade every day, that, that, that doesn't mean you should. And so, right. you know, when you wake up and you're, you know, uh, I know it while, uh, you know, I'm talking to my community, you know, my words are not as eloquent as normal or, uh, you know, I'm messing up on something or, uh, you know, I'm not quick to my platform, uh, click, click, click. I recognize, you know, even professional athletes cannot be perfect every single day. And, yeah. and if you're not being, you know, perfect, if you know that you're not in pristine condition, why should you trade your own capital? So this right. is like really important to identify when you need a mental or physical day to just decompress and stay away from it so that you could come back and, uh, you know, get back at it and you're sharp. And so when we do this every day, it's just so important to be able to identify your own, uh, you know, your own uh, strengths and weaknesses and recognize, oh, this might be a day where maybe I just watch or I That's simulate, true. even though you're, you're a professional right. trader, you know, just Such to take a break. So sure. brilliant. What about you, drummer Sandy West from The Runaways? Uh -huh. I, I agree, you know, there's, you know, it's really important to know when to place the trade and it's, you know, equally as important to know when not to trade, probably even more important to know when not to trade, you know, when, right. um, you know, you might have a day where, you know, like she was saying, uh, Sandra was saying that you don't feel well and you're not, maybe you, you didn't sleep well, or you're aggravated or something's throwing you off. And there's times when I know it's just better I don't step near that computer, you know, today. Um, you know, I try to, you know, like I work out in the morning, I'm huge into fasting, which kind of just comes along naturally. Cause I'm always doing so many things out throughout the day I that I don't cook. eat. And then by the time I, cook, eat, yeah. I, like, <laughs> I basically eat to stay alive. Right. So, um, yeah. you know, cheese and crackers are my thing. I am like, a, that's, that's all I eat is I got cheese and crackers and whatever's <laughs> fast, but I'm a huge juicer. So I do get my vitamins in. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, I, I mean, protein, so I love cachava. I don't know if you guys have heard of this protein powder, but it's amazing. Um, I use that and I put it in with like bananas and hemp seeds and chia seeds and flax seeds. And, you know, just, uh, even though it comes with all that stuff and there's a lot of, um, good nutrients in there in regards to like, uh, mushrooms that you're, I think you were referring to with the lion's mane right. and the nootropics and then, uh, also yeah. um, probiotics and just a whole bunch of good stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah, find some, I have that one too. So yeah, find a great nutritionist here in Hollywood. we we go with Ben Greenfield and Anthony Williams. So they're everywhere. I do Tracy Anderson, love her. So find your stick and just, we'll finish up with the greatest supplement of all time, which is sleep. So make yes, sure you get yes. it. Mm. And that's a big amazing, deal. So thank you. Amazing stories. We're going to have another show where, where we reenact the two hours where we were hanging out yeah. and just yeah, that was so, so, fun. Fun. Stories, so good. So thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a great time. Check out there. We, we put those in the tags line. We'll be able to watch this again. And I really appreciate you guys coming on. It was really fun. Just building up to this as well. Great to meet you all. And uh, thanks. It was thanks. thanks for having us on. Yeah. Thanks, thanks guys. For having us.